My name is Jason Shiramade. I'm the flight director uh, with Alteros. I'm in charge of uh, training, handling, and safety of the aerostat. I was in the Marine Corps for 10 years, doing communications. Got out of the Marine Corps, uh, went back to Afghanistan um, as a contractor, flying aerostats, single tether aerostats. Flying aerostats now since 2010, so about 11 years now. Um, joined Alteros four years ago. And I've been doing uh, autonomous aerostats ever since then. Alright, so with a single tether aerostats, usually uh, I'm used to having a crew of 12 to 16 people on site, uh, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Um, and then coming to Oteros, which is uh, an autonomous aerostat, um, down to almost nobody. On the single tether aerostats, you need people on the ground. To hold the tether, you have somebody holding each line, everybody's trying to control one winch at a time. So with a single tethered aerostat, it's very challenging to land in high winds, especially winds over 30 miles per hour. That's why when you're gusting, that's very dangerous. Because not only are you looking out for the aerostat, you're looking out for the ground personnel, you're looking out for the safety to make sure the mooring platform, the boom, doesn't hit the personnel on the ground while they're staring up in the sky, trying to handle the lines from the aerostat and secure the aerostat. Uh, Altero's aerostat, which is autonomous, you don't need any of these people on the ground. So we fly at much more higher wind speeds and recover at much more higher wind speeds. Traditional aerostats, at least looking at the one behind me, um, any aerostat of that size and below, usually try to, they tend not to fly or recover in winds higher than 30 miles per hour, which the one behind me definitely has exceeded that when it comes to launch, recovery, or flight. So behind me is the ST Flex. First thing first is safety. So watch out, wherever we step, make sure we don't step on any tethers or fibers or anything like that. Um, so you can see, right now it's in free sloop. So that means the aerostat is on the ground, it's docked, and it moves and lines itself with the wind. So we have to be careful with that so you don't get you know, ran over or hit. Uh, okay, let's walk. So the cool thing here, the first thing you notice with this aerostat, there are no controls. You have no joysticks. Um, just there. You have no nose cone. There's usually a nose capture on traditional aerostats that holds the aerostat in place, especially when it's docked to keep it steady. But with this guy, we don't have any of that stuff. The only thing you have is landing pads just to cradle the aerostat while we're in the dock position. Um, this is going to be the payload area where we, it stays protected. It keeps it out of the elements. Um, so I like this a lot, compared to most traditional aerostats, they keep the payload right there in between the fins. But having a payload down here, obviously when it's in the air, you have a clear line of sight and you have no interference. Okay, we're walking this way. We have our beacons, our traditional aerostats. They usually have the beacons on the tethers. And sometimes they are usually attached on the fins. But the ST Flex, we have them and the aft right there in between all three fins on the port side, midway of the aerostat, and on the starboard side. Okay. And then once we walk this way, we have an onboard on the ST Flex. We have an onboard generator for backup in case you lose power and we can still supply continuous power for several hours all the way up the tether, especially when the aerostat is in flight, to keep all the airborne avionics working. Right. Okay, and this is it. Again, this is the front portion of the ST Flex. See, everything is very compact, well assembled. There's no obstruction. We have a height clearance. Traditional aerostats will have a big mast right here in the center, which is about maybe 20 feet up in the air, just trying to capture and hold the aerostat. So it makes it a little bit more challenging, but that's the difference. Right. And another cool thing about the uh, ST Flex. You know, it can be hooked onto, it has this trailer, so it's mobile, so it helps for quick assembly and quick setup. So here on the ST Flex, we have, as you can see, we have three uh, winches. We have the port, the starboard, and the aft. 
The port and starboard are going to be our strength tethers, and they're very well marked because um, we're a cell phone tower. We're simulating being a cell phone tower, so we have them um, orange and white, and it makes it more visible in the air for pilots and just less obstruction in the sky, as well as with the beacons. Um, and if you walk this way, so this is our tether, the aft tether, where we have our power and fiber, just like any other aerostat running through the aft tether. Traditional aerostats, that's the only thing holding the aerostat in the air. That is why they can't fly uh, through those high winds, because at a certain point, too much tension, too much wind, you could break the fiber inside and you could lose the aerostat. It could cut off the whole tether and you lose the aerostat. Downdrafts, updrafts, and blowbacks, huge problems for a traditional aerostat. When a traditional aerostat gets a downdraft, it pushes down on the aerostat, the aerostat pitches up, you have slack tether. So you, the, slack, the tether could lay on the ground for four or five feet at a time, depending on how bad it is. You have power going through this tether, and that becomes a safety hazard. Altero's aerostat, we're always on multiple tethers. That helps us fly through the bad winds, higher winds, all kind of inclement weather and we have more accuracy and control of the aerostat. Another advantage with the ST Flex, those two tethers, the orange and white ones on the port and starboard, helps us for redundancy as well as um, keeping the aerostat stable in flight and when it comes to docking in those higher winds.